I'll bet you I don't. His Jacques Rougeau. Although there was good stuff on the show. So we did have Becky Lynch coming out for a promo, and she's interrupted by Bailey. They both want to be in Elimination Chamber. And then Bianca Belair comes out, and they announce that they're going to do a three-way in the main event. <laughs> Sorry. If either of them beat That's Bianca... Just... This guy, I love W-O-R. W-O-L, Brian is his double banger. No. Doppelganger, not double banger. (laughs) Dude, I got to mute you for a second, brother. Keep reading that chat, you double banger. But anyway, so if if Bianca wins, then neither of them are in the chamber. And if either of them win, they are in the chamber. And uh, to cut to the chase, uh, Bianca won, so neither of them are in the chamber. And, uh, And they are once again doing... Becky has no path to WrestleMania. Now, do I love this storyline that one of the biggest stars in the company has no path to WrestleMania? No. Do they have to do it every year? Yes. But, you know, I had people yesterday were going, oh, man, it sucked when they did it with Seth. You mean the debut of Cody, which was one of the biggest things on all of WrestleMania and had the people going absolutely... I think that one worked out okay. But anyway, now Becky has to find a path to WrestleMania. We had Damian Priest and Finn Balor against the Street Profits. And uh, they ended up, uh, Damian Priest and Finn Balor won the match. And then uh, they beat him up afterwards. And out comes Edge and uh, Beth Phoenix. Have a big brawl. Rhea Ripley makes a surprise return. Lays out Beth Phoenix. Setting up this mixed tag at the pay-per-view this coming weekend. And we had Lesnar and Lashley. I thought we had no top heels. This Lashley is going to be all right, I think, as a top heel. So Lesnar wants his match. It's for a contract signing. Lashley comes out. He's got all the security sitting at a desk. Lesnar's getting more and more irritated that he won't just sign the stupid contract. Lashley's talking about how the ball's in his court. So finally, Lesnar goes after him. He starts mowing down these security guys. And then, boom, Bobby Lashley gives him a backdrop onto the ramp and then spears him on the ramp, signs the contract, drops it on his chest. They're going to have a banger coming up this weekend. And it kind of looked like a shoot backdrop. Piper Niven beat uh, Mia Yim. Just a match to get Piper Niven over. Went two minutes. They're pushing her as a monster. You know, trying to make some female heels. Uh, Then we have the Sammy Cody segment, which you talked about earlier, which really the whole gist of it, if you didn't see it, which you should, was uh, Cody giving Sammy a pep talk about how you can win. You can beat Roman Reigns. You've been you've been the man to tear apart the bloodline. You can do this. And I don't want to see you at Raw next week. I want to see you at WrestleMania. Everybody goes crazy. This is awesome. I tell you guys, but it worked. Afraid to tell you, worked great. They loved both guys. Then we had uh, poor Corbin. Uh, well, first Corbin was trying to do an interview, and then they just cut away from him like a geek. And then they come back to the interview again, and he starts burying Cody, and Cody's just walk- walked through the curtain. And so Corbin throws out a line about how your brother sucks, your dad sucked, and your dog! And he can't even get through your dog when... Cody attacks him, throws him through the curtain, demands a referee, works the whole match in his suit, and uh, ends up beating him with the uh, crossroads, lays him out. Crowd loves it. Two minutes. And uh, there you go. It's Cody shredded, by the way. And then we had Asuka, Carmella, and Nikki against Liv, Raquel, and Natty. Man, all those people are like, oh, why don't they ever do anything with Asuka? Well, you know what? Maybe you should have watched this show when they had a six-person match. She beat up both of her partners and then beat the other team single-handedly. That was awesome. Blavos increíbles. What? Did I say that right? No. You haven't no. said anything right today, but that's okay. <laughs> we had uh, Maxine trying to recruit Otis for maximum male models. Please. Don't even think I'm not Please. excited for this one. <laughs> Bronson Reed. I mean, I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but they're very clearly trying to build up Bronson Reed to a main event position. He just comes out every week and kills dudes. And he killed Ali this week. And then for reasons I cannot explain, 
They announced on social media Ali versus Ziggler next week. And a match that literally the only people that could care about it are the people that actually paid this close attention to social media to actually see this angle. Hey, as wide as Otis is, when they went to break, he walked by Otis, and you see how big Bronson Reed is. Oh, he's way, he looked way bigger than Otis. We had a Miz TV with Seth Rollins. Seth's out in these stupid social media boots. Oh, Brian, you don't know anything about pop culture to know about. I don't care. I don't care why he's wearing the boots. What matters to me is he's out in balloons on his feet, and then he's got to cut a shoot promo calling Miz Mike because he's so mad about this Logan Paul bloke. And then they have a brawl, and he's supposed to do a curb stomp in these balloons. And I'm supposed to, I'm like, bro, get out of here. This was stupid. This whole thing sucked. Absolutely sucked. Triple H's water poured out of the bucket. Old Boogs then beats oh, the Miz. Beat him with a bucket. After, after curling him repeatedly. That was great. We're having something where uh, Chelsea Green is going to falsely accuse Adam Pierce of something, it appears. And then the main event, yes, Bianca beat Bailey and Becky. So, uh, you know, Becky's got no path to mania. All the women in Elimination Chamber were out there brawling. Fans were just waiting for a finish. They got it. And uh, now we head to the Elimination Chamber. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll see where, where Becky's path to mania takes her, won't we? I don't think we should panic yet, but we can if we want. Knock, knock, who's there? Ric Flair. Ric Flair who? No, Ric Flair who? (laughs) I didn't get that one. (laughs) (laughs) Knock, knock, who's there? (laughs) Bailey. Bailey who? We Bailey made it home in time to watch SmackDown That's not how knock, knock jokes work. (laughs) We Bailey? What does that mean? She's small. It's we barely made it home. Oh, we barely made it. <laughs> well, your Invisalign made you dumb. <laughs> Why did the referee referee's feet smell when he was working? Because he was a doody, doodle. <laughs> what? <laughs> because he was a doodle. His feet smelled because he was a doodle. Yeah, I don't get it. What? See, these, these, these are so dumb that they're funny. Am I high? I don't. I, I drove here. I think I was sober when I got here. If you enjoy these videos, for just seven dollars and ninety nine cents per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.